obviously super high skill ceiling, but nowhere to be found at the moment, even though he's trying. It's one of those things where, as a player, you get you get put in teams that you get to perform with and that you're supported with, right? Like certain players, they don't always have good games, but the rest of their team enable them to still have like a good showing. I see. And then when you drop out that team and drop into that kind of tier below, it's hard to have those stand-up performances mm. because if you play bad, it's like 10 times worse, right? Because again, you don't have the teammates to make you look a little bit better. So I feel like they're kind of in that rut of they're finding their rhythm. And like, for example, Funic, yep. he's taking so long, find his team, let's not get too carried away. You know, it's only game one and obviously this is a, another online event, but they are looking to understand how they need to play together. That's the key the key aspect that I've taken away from, from Funic. Yeah. So far, they've been doing well. They took two <laughs> games off of WP. Now they won the first one versus Navi as yeah, well. For sure. I think it's a Moon Lord syndrome, you know? Uh, you kind of get inside your own head and you're like, oh man, I'm the best, but I can't perform. You get frustrated. That leads to more anger, more hatred. And you turn to the dark side. Next thing you know, you're killing younglings, you know? It's yeah. Think, yeah, slippery. <laughs> that's specifically true for offlane players, by the way, because that can bring some tilt out for you. It's also probably like the ego that you might get from being, from being good yeah. and then not at, playing in teams that aren't actually as good and then still having that same ego. Not referencing any players, but some people have that ego still floating around trying to break back into these tier one teams and they actively kind of get kind of worked when they try and play competitive Dota. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, thank you. Would you say that you have a big ego or not? <laughs> Mate, I'm not relevant. I don't play Dota, so can't. I mean, no, you, you're not I, trying. No, like the ego, I think like realistically though, everyone's allowed to have an ego in Dota. It's a competitive game. So you, you have you, to have, you have to, yeah, you, you, exactly. have to have it. you have to believe in yourself, but it's the point in which you have to be realistic enough to mm -hmm. understand when you're not actually as good as you think you are. For example, a pub. When you play bad, don't flame someone else. You have to realize no, and identify no. that you're the problem. Mm, I Sometimes. think you should always flame. I, I, I've heard you say this on stream before, and what? I like it when you go down this road. <laughs> no, look, look. Uh, look uh, let's, I, I want to listen you, to the lizard, yeah. If you're too self-critical, yep. eventually you will start hating yourself and the game that you're playing, and you'll, you, you, you won't feel good playing. It's much easier to let it all out that some yeah. random kid playing in his mom's, I don't know... Basement? Basement, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier to scream at him. Sure. Okay. <laughs> why, why be self-critical? Why improve? That's, that's garbage. Garbage talk. You say it so well, and uh, that's my. To be obviously, fair, that's <laughs> why I succeeded. So <laughs> this is why you're here. <laughs> that's why I'm on the panel. Advice not playing. from the uh, yeah, from the from the pros, but uh, and it's it's a good you know probably not not a good advice actually you know yep. but a lot of people clearly have a lot of uh, pent up anger and come into Dota to scream at some people at least. They're not taking out on anyone in real life, you know, punching up some people or, or taking them on the streets, you know. Just at least they're just screaming at you and over a mic. So next time someone's flaming at you, just be like, you know, I don't know what's going on in their life. Mute Maybe yourself. they need to do this. Yeah. Uh, mute yourself, you mute your opponent, and just enjoy the game. Don't do what Lizard said. No, no, no. Definitely. Just mute the players. Yeah, they're And then you flamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flaming a brick wall. Alrighty, let's get into this draft. We are the first through the first phase. Words are hard. And uh, we have a Void Spirit and a Batrider to start things off from Hellraisers. Hellraisers proven time and time again that uh, they absolutely love these two heroes and will first pick them when possible, especially the Void Spirit. Uh, they can flex it really hard across all three lanes pretty much. And uh, yeah, I think I've even seen them play at four as well. So uh, definitely in the three position, definitely in the mid. You so can, yeah, they love you, it. Yeah, in the first banning stage as well that we didn't discuss way too much, you can see that they have focused on magical a bit, banning out that TA. Mm -hmm. In the second banning stage, they only have one hero to ban and they decide just to ban that Oracle to prevent them from uh, just easily dealing with the Batrider. Yeah, for sure. And also, I think Na'Vi, they're a team pretty well known, obviously, for whipping out the Haskar as well. Oh, so they yeah. might be setting themselves mm -hmm. up for quite a tempo draft and being able to pressure, because Void Spirit will have no lane if you pick a Haskar. Also, what's really interesting about Na'Vi and the way they play that Haskar, they're not your Disruptor. first Aegis endgame kind of a team when they're playing Haskar. Mm -hmm. They even let it go. They don't contest the first Aegis if they don't feel like they're stronger or that they're in a position to do so. They let it go and they play Haskar even for the late game. And it somehow works. They make it work. It's quite peculiar for, for a Huskar game. Very sure. astute observation there, Liz. Thank you. And this is also, this is the type of draft that you see Na'Vi pull out, you know? The double support offlane opening. You want to enable your one and two. Don't really need to reveal anything. Hellraisers, they've got so much flexibility with all three of these picks. You've got Pangolier. We've seen it on Roger. We've seen it on Funic. Batrider most likely will be support at this point. And then Voice Brick could easily be in, again, all these roles. So Hellraisers making sure that because they don't have Last pick, 
they're going to utilize the fact that they will have the final choice in the second phase. So are you telling me that the Oracle ban was not only the next level play, mm -hmm. not next level ban mind game that is, yeah. in which you're making them think that the Oracle is offline, uh, that the Bat Rider is offline, right? The you could potentially put if it you, in a position of four or three, potentially, yes. Bat Rider is going to be five, but you ban the Oracle so they think that it's going to be offlane or whatever. And also yeah. you're banning that Oracle for the Huskar too, so it has multiple u uses. That's what you meant, right? That's the, that's, that's the coach brain right there coming through, man. The that was a journey. Love it. So I'm going to bring this plane back it's down now. We've got yeah. a uh, Naga Siren <laughs> picked up by, uh, by Na'Vi. Uh, so they <laughs> finally found their Disruptor Na'Vi. Uh, but you've already got the Pangolier. Void Spirit's pretty okay. Obviously, with the wave mm. there, the department, you know, they'll... Yeah, you get caught out by the sleep and mm, yeah, be really bad. It was though. okay. Like, if o a on a scale of like 0 to 10, okay, okay. is like a, like a 3.5. <laughs> so, not really putting Isn't too many okay chips five? in it. Nah, it's good. It's five's okay, good. just like... Five is good? Yeah. I'd say good's like 7.5. Oh, that's way too high. Like, that's okay. like, great. And then you have like, excellent. And, <laughs> yeah, words. But no, yeah, you got the... This is the, this is where Hellraiser will excel in their draft right now. I feel they're going to be able mm -hmm. to pick their their boss tier hero right now, deal with this Naga, and then just pick another casual a casual wrapping up hero. Because mm. yeah, your win condition and your hero that counters the Naga available? as well. Has it been banned? Ember's a really good hero mm -hmm. for them right now. I, I love yeah. that call. Yeah, it's yeah. also a hero that they have played before too, multiple times. So it would fit versus the Naga as counter. Only problem is they have some silences, they have some heroes to deal with him, they but do. you can itemi itemize against that. Again, it might be banned. We'll see in a second once we jump back to the draft screen, yeah. but I hope it isn't banned <laughs> so they can pick it. Make the last few uh, minutes of conversation kind of uh, pointless, wouldn't it? Kind of a little bit, yeah. Unfortunate. It happens. Usually, usually for Navi as well, when they're drafting this Naga, they like to put something on mid that can just play the mid game, right? Something like an SF perhaps, even yeah, for Magical. That's what last pick's for at this point. Yeah. You know, they've set themselves up to enable their mid lane to have such a great game that then you have this insane combo of the combo of the Naga Disruptor. Like, and so good because they didn't do the Death Prophet first pick, right? Oh, yeah, the exactly. first pick for Magical. They went the completely opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, usually, it's usually a much safer direction too, to save your mid laner for later on in the draft. Track with the Lesh Rack yeah. again. Okay, yeah, that's also fine. Fair like enough. when you think of illusion heroes, the two top heroes against it is like Ember and Lesh Rack. That, that's in my mind, the two heroes that you want. So Lesh Rack, really solid hero going to align themselves with that game plan. I would expect them to potentially to pick up the Phonic Hero last. I kind of like the idea of putting the Pangolier 4 yeah, and then I just getting a solid hero that can run around and actually have a strong laning phase. I it think should be your, uh, on HR, it should be your Void Spirit offlane, your uh, Bat Rider 5, right? Pango 4. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then the last sure. pick, their safe laner. I was seeing it potentially carry. as... Void Spirit mid, let's right carry again. Mm, Go yeah, for the that, tempo that, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, then you could, this do, you could do that so as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I really sure. think they're just waiting to see what uh, what Navi throw down here and uh, will answer appropriately. Because like they can just mess up these lanes however they want. I uh, imagine they want to do something against the uh, to keep the Naga in check yeah. though. If you're Hellraisers, you might want to ban out some of these more mobile mids, like a, a Storm or maybe even like the Quap. I think Storm's really strong for them right now because there's no lockdown on Hellraisers. When you get the Ags, so much control. You layer that with obviously the, the Naga Disruptor. You then have another offensive mechanism that you don't need to use Song for because now you have the Storm Zipping in. How do you feel about just getting the Ember for themselves as well? It's really good versus yeah. Void Spirit too also throughout works. the game and you don't have to ban it sure, versus yeah, the Naga. Course, yeah. It's also your mid-game potential hero. So. But Could they, be what they're considering right now as the well. Rule. Whether to ban it or let it go. And they go, they, they ban, ban the Monkey, Monkey King. King. So this ban though, I can see this ban being a, we'll ban Monkey, thinking like, you know, offer up the, the fact that, okay, maybe we want you to pick Ember, right? Kunkka? Mm, yeah, Kunkka. For, also for Navi? Option? Yeah, that's the thing though, Navi's got so many options because yeah. it's, it's a default mid hero that they can pick. Our focus should be on Hellraisers right now. They need to, they need to decide what ban like, they need to decide on their pick rather than their ban right now, because they need to cover whatever they're going to pick here, knowing that Magical is going to have, like, the perfect lane potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're probably assuming that because they ban on the Monkey King, that Na'Vi wants something like either the Ember of the Storm, like you guys were mentioning. Um, but then they also kind of want the Ember of the Storm, but they, I think maybe you ban one, pick the other. One hero that I think is actually pretty good, strong right now, is uh, Pugna. It's... The changes to it. I'm not saying maybe not in this game, but maybe maybe Navi might go for it if they don't pick any kind of backline catch. But just the fact that the changes to it, uh, you've got it was banned out in the first phase bans against Navi previously in different games, mm -hmm. and also he's been practicing quite a lot in pubs where I think he's like four and oh five and oh. So I think this hero could be pretty strong. You see the quad ban, 
mobility is the issue. So I think Storm Spirit is now really good for Na'Vi, but keep aware that a, a Pokemon might appear. That's a very interesting might pop ban, appear. actually. Anyway. See, you know the strategy to do a draft? You basically list every hero in the, in the, in the game, and then eventually one of them's right, right? So I've gone Storm, Quap, Pugna. So I've got three... Is three there a TA somewhere? TA is bad. TA is already bad. We covered that in the first place. Do not fear. Well, I for one think they might pick uh, Shadow Fiend, Wraith King. Uh, Wraith? Oh, what? I'm just trying to list as many heroes Jesus. as I could. Oh, oh, like, what? What? Uh, Ricky? Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, this is something that we have forgotten oh, earlier on as well. Yeah. Something that we haven't even mentioned, but I don't like Ricky that much here. Ricky does not sound that great versus Illusion Heroes, versus Naga as well. If he has to go Diffuse or yeah. Battle Fury. Of now. course. Uh, you don't have to go Battle Fury. I don't think so. You just go for the Diffusal and you play the... Uh, you play the tempo, right? You yep. try to hunt the Naga True. early on. You try to invade the jungle the same way they did versus Anti-Mage. Now you're doing this pretty much the identical thing, but with Ricky plus one, you're hunting her, you're using that Diffusal Smokescreen, and you're trying to take care of her before she reaches that critical timing. Because once she does, this Ricky just melts. Just, I'm just waiting for this last pick. I, I mean, I, I kind of feel like, feel yeah, you've got, you've already got the Naga covered with early game, at least, with the Lesh Rack. They're not really planning to get to the point mm -hmm. where yeah. they're going to go with the Ember, the Ember Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, bat out the monkey, pick the Ember, keep it nice and sane. So, yeah, Navi with a much more kind of normal looking draft, I would say. I don't think um, they, they care too much, you know? Like, the fact yeah. that they, they got this Ricky. Ricky's pretty good against Ember Spirit in, in the game. Of course, you have that Cloud, the Diffusal Blade. Ember doesn't really itemize to deal with that until, like, third, fourth item. So I can see how, how Razors, they're going to have this ability to go. They're going to be able to, they have take towers of less rec, they're going to be able to fight. The, the issue that is simply there is, if they fail a couple of times, you are running high ground into Naga Disruptor, which is very scary. And yep. it's so easy to get to the back lines with Ember Centaur. So it, it's such, a, it's actually an even game. Like this is no, no, it's not the same as the first game. This is going to be an actual, actually close game where right, you know, it's, it's a very break. even draft. I think Navi obviously have the ease of execution yes, because sure. of the Naga and the Disruptor, also the Centaur. The lanes, however, I think might be a little bit easier for HR. You have Ricky plus Batrider versus Sand plus Sky. Uh, Sky, I haven't seen quite a lot recently. He can nuke you down, but also if you get a lot of uh, sticky napalms on him and Ricky is on that lane, he can just easily be deleted from that lane. I think the yeah. main thing with Sky though is the fact that because everyone has their own courier and you bring out more regen, like mm -hmm. it used to be Sky used to be a strong hero because you punish it and you're playing off of like either no gold on supports or the fact that you don't have any regen. Mm -hmm. But now you always have you it. Just so. put that word behind the towers yeah. a bit deeper and you scout for the couriers, perhaps. Exactly. You play around Alrighty, that. Alrighty, guys, we do have our casters coming in from above. So, OD and S4, are you with us? Well, we are indeed, Nomad. And uh, so definitely looking to, toward this one with a, a lot of excitement once more. We're getting some Ricky action. Um, I mean, S4, what do you reckon from these two drafts? I, I kind of like the way that Hellraisers have, have responded to that Naga with the, the Lesh and Ricky. It feels kind of good to me. Yeah, no, I mean, the Lesh, definitely. <laughs> the Ricky is super, super risky. Pick. Uh, I want to see. Do you guys feel yeah, like... Yeah, because we'll um... see if... Uh... If Ricky does have that edge, obviously this Battle Fury build that, that I feel we've seen a few times come out against these Illusion cores. You know, if you can get away with the Diffusal into Battle Fury in good timing, you can have a pretty good game against these heroes in the team fights. Definitely. Do you, do you guys feel like Hellraisers are on a timer this game? Yes, uh, for sure. Okay. You don't believe in the late game, Ricky, S4? Um, no. <laughs> no good disruptor. Uh, too many... Yeah, Annoying heroes like Stampede. Sure. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's that's a good point. Too many ways to get out of the cloud setup and and things to do. But we'll see what what Hellraisers can pull off. Because last game they played it for fast. They they knew exactly what to do with their draft and, and they did come out on top of Navi. Alrighty. Well, I hear the game is underway. Hellraisers. They are on a bit of a timer. Will they be able to beat the clock? Let's find out in game number two. Right, so let's get a, get ourselves into this one. Game two, ladies and gentlemen, of Na'Vi versus Hellraisers. Hellraisers, of course, up a game at the moment. So well, in terms of what we're going to see this game, you know, S4, again, getting against these sort of hard carries, you know, crystallized this time on, on the Naga Siren. Is this going to fall into sort of a similar pattern as we saw in game one, where it's very much crystallized, just trying to play out, push the lanes out, whilst Na'Vi are trying to deal with the aggression of Hellraisers in the mid game? Uh, yeah. Kinda. Uh, you're gonna see Pasha is gonna rush dagger this game. I'm pretty sure. So they picked Sky with the Centaur. They want to combo this. Uh, um, I want to see Fnatic go ham this game. I think they need it. The Lesh Rack. 
that intentional? That intentional? Looked intentional. Looked intentional. Yeah, we'll see, see what he can do. I think, you know, last game he... It was sort of a funny performance in a different way. Definitely more emphasis on sort of the, the sacrificial moves that he was making in comparison to when we saw him really pop off on the, the KDA yesterday against VP. This hero, definitely one where he can sort of go down that route once more, especially when he's going to be paired up with the antics of Roger on the Pangolier. Also another standout player from yesterday's series against VP. Uh, and we'll see what sort of start they can get in the lane. They'll be up against Magical and Ilias. This Ember Spirit, obviously the, the final pick that Na'Vi went for this match. Uh, I mean, talking more about this hero, what, what, what do you think the idea was here from Na'Vi? What, what does this hero do that they needed with that last pick? Um, Honestly, this was kind of a comfort pick, I think. Because I don't see the... Well, one reason is people pick Ember as Void Spirit mid. So that was one of the reasons why I saw them picking it. But other, other than that, it's not a big reason to pick it. it just fits yeah, their playstyle. And is it, I mean, is Magical going to have an alright time up here, would you imagine? Uh, against sort of Phonic, yeah. Roger making the pulls, does this Ember still farm? Yeah, I think, uh, let's see how Phonic is doing here. I think this lane is going to be hard for Phonic, actually. Because, uh, you see, he bought Blightstone on Ember. Uh, if they just hit him together, it's gonna take so much damage on Lush. But this pull is kind of saving the lane now for them. Yeah, Roger getting a, a really nice grab around. They just couldn't do anything to stop it. Ilias, of course, on his own, just cannot trade back and get the pull on the creep. So Roger holding it in an excellent position, allowing them to get the second wave coming in right underneath the tower. So Funic get quite a lot out of this, and it is is relatively hard for Magical to step forward. Other than just offering the occasional spam with a slight of fist. Down bottom, Slayer is able to get in and take the courier out as also he drags around this lane. Maposhka has got that level one remnant. So has not yeah. managed to find the connection though, so Slayer's going to get away with this without taking too much damage at all. So, okay, this bottom lane, I want to talk about it because I think Navi should absolutely stomp this lane. Uh, but they they bought the wrong items, in my opinion. If they had a Bassi and a Clarity, you know, you know Clarity got super buffed last time. It did, didn't it? Right. So it's now it's more about getting the, the regen much quicker over a short time. Yeah. So if this Skyraf just gets Arcane Bolts and uh, gets a Clarity and a Bassi, uh, they're going to run out of regen. Rick is high armor here, but it doesn't protect him from magic damage. So they could just spam them out there. First blood, it's going to go the way on the top lane. Elias and Magical do catch him out that early point in the slide of fists. Uh, sorry, no, in the, in the searing chains that we are now seeing, of course, in the Ember builds, thanks to the buffs received in 7.25. And allowing them to, to get those early sort of kills on these these squishy heroes like the, the very low level Pango in the laning stage. I, I don't remember who, who it was who introduced this build, but it was like a year or two years ago. I think, I think it was Topson or Anna. They started doing the slide max, even on safe lane. It's a very strong laner, actually. Yeah, I'll be there. They're getting the kills. Sure, they lose the, the Disruptor, but this is more glory for Magical. He's going to take quite a beating in return, but Roger... Look at the items he bought so Sweet fast. Not. Magical, dropping. Everyone. I like it. Keeping those man getting those mangoes out as well, so you can instantly just continue to, to spam that slight fist, as you say, with that, that early blight of stone and the second point in it. it. It really does hurt, you know, a few of those and suddenly Hellraisers. I mean, that just the spam ability between the safe lane of Na'Vi, the, the Thunderstrike as well. You're constantly keeping Hellraiser's heroes very low in the lane. Yeah, so in this top lane, their goal should be to get Lesh level 6 before Ember, or slow down the Ember level 6 should be the key. So I wanted, I want to see more hard camp pulling like this and pushing in the wave because Bat's job this game you can see stealing the Arcan rune, Naga Bat's job this game is not to lane mid uh, for too long This is a pain for- if he gets this kill as well this is gonna hurt Crystallize will live cancel. with the illusions as uh, yeah it's a good job that TP did come in Crystallize went down he'd already used his TP cooldown to, to get back when Kasani played aggressive with a Firefly that could have been pretty much lane ending so yeah. very very important that Crystallize stays alive there very important to take the Arcan rune uh, from him. Arcan rune bad is absolutely disgusting. He can't. He can just keep clicking Firefly. Uh, yeah. So I think at some point his bat should move away from mid and gank Ember top. Look at top. 
Yeah, some good body blocks right away. Yeah, very nicely done there, setting up one onto slide. Magical. It's got one more slide, but it's not enough to kill off Funnick. Hellraisers taking the Ember out of the lane. They don't even need the rotation with those sort of plays. Very, very sweetly done between the two of them to lock him in position. Make sure he cannot get out of the range of Funnick's split up. Yeah. He just needs to buy Boots here, I believe. Remember? He did. Look at Centaur. Middle tower. He's just getting right in trading as much as he can. He's got the Retaliator ready to pop. That's one of them. Miposhka beaten down. He's got to be careful when those stacks get high. Pasha will be more than happy to turn against these low HP heroes. Yeah, you see, um, he's been running out of mana a lot in this guy. It's because of the headdress they bought. Of course, it helps them a lot, but here we go. Mid lane. TP's from both sides coming in. Crystallize, he's gonna go for the TP out. They got the damage, they don't. Crystallize will make it away. Just in time, one more touch and he would have been gone. Quick thinking there with the instant TP out, knows that there's no other means to cancel it, even with potential TP's in. Yeah. Now raises, they try and play it fast down bottom, looking towards Pasha, but Pasha a little too beefy right now, level five. And stick charge is good to go. He's able to get back underneath the tower and get himself away. So I was talking about Bat yesterday. We saw we have played mid. Uh, I just want to mention that the flame break is sometimes better than the lasso here at level six, because it's uh, costs like no mana and lower cooldown. So he could go for the same play he did there, just the flame break. Nice. Well, top lane where we're just seeing constant brawling. They are bringing a third member in, Navi. They're looking for the chase, Funic. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan no, of this uh, Skyrath top lane. Even though they got the kill here, look at bottom now. Uh, this lane should be losing very hard for Hellraiser's bottom. Well, and, and, uh, both the Nyx is just making so much happen with it because of that lack of pressure now with the Skyrath gone. The easy CS for Ricky down here in the safe lane. Yeah. So the game is looking pretty good for Hellraiser's so. though. This bad rider is gonna go travels, but I want to see him active right now. Next Firefly. He can Firefly the next wave if he wants to. Uh, instead of going Nitros. And then he pushes in the lane and then it goes somewhere. He should be going bottom again. Bottom center will die. Nick's able to get the last touch too. Yeah, so More bad, money for this Ricky. Bad should uh, go bottom and keep center again. Uh, as he spawns and TP's down. They have a lane word for it too. And so sort of like, yeah, summarizing this this first seven minutes of laning, you feel really the, the biggest sort of glaring issue is the fact that Na'Vi just lost this bottom lane in a way that the, the heroes really shouldn't in that 2v2. Yeah. yeah. They, they, I don't think they put too much focus on it. Uh, rather than they put more focus on the other lanes. Like so around mid. Kasani, he's ready to get aggressive with that haste rune straight in on top of the sky. There's nothing the poor old Slayer could do to live other than pop the stick charge. I say he can't do anything to live. It's, it's actually enough. They yeah, they do make the quick call to back away. He really wants to do more with his haste. You can see it on him. He wants to do more. Keen optic. Oh, that's a very good item on Bat, actually. That's very, very good. Nice. He's going to go immediately in with this, this Invis rune. Crystallize is full HP, though. Firefly is, is back up. I mean, he can't really do anything on his own against this. He's probably got to look towards one of the other lanes, or, or maybe with the, the time left on the invis, all he can do is go back towards mid. This top lane, Ember's getting more and more space. You know, Magical, because of these sort of lack of movements from the, the bat, as Kasani now does come out of the invis to try and go on to Crystallize, but by these tier two towers, they're, they're, they're coming in. Reactions there from Ilias. You, you cannot continue to dive as the bat rider. Uh, as Kasani's game continues to get slowed down. Top lane, Maposhka and Funny. <laughs> They actually get the kill on their own. The remnant pull into the stun will lock him down. Catch out this ember despite him being seven and having the ultra uh, at the ready. Didn't have remnants out and he wasn't prepared for, for that sort of catch to come in from the shadows from Maposhka. Yeah, okay, so the outpost is coming up soon. Uh, I kind of want to see them uh, go top now with that. For the outpost with Lesh. Coupled up with Lesh. They'll have the outpost. So they get two outposts. If they want to. Uh, this bat is circling mid a lot. Uh, I feel like he should be moving on the map more, but let's see. I mean, because what do you think sort of the, the, the thinking is here from Kasani? Is he just too focused on, on maybe trying to create this area where the Naga can't turn up to farm? Or, or what's his, his sort of plan right now, do you think, in his yeah. head? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what you said. He's worried about this Naga, but he can stop the Naga indirectly by going ganking other lanes. 
Um, bottom man bus. Committed. We'll be able to take it back before the 10 minutes. And up top, Hellraisers will be able to get the, the straight trade. Oh, I say, oh, he stopped doing it. Oh, oh no, Maposhka. That's that's... Oh, no, he, get, he let go of it at the last second and he doesn't get it in time now. I mean, it's, you know, not the biggest of XP early on, but, you know, every little it bit matters. counts in these games, yeah. Now, suddenly someone's not, not hitting that six or, or getting that ult online as, you know, yeah. sort of a creep or two quicker, and that, that makes all the difference in these games. It, it's game-changing, especially this game, because it's a Disruptor and a Sky. Those two are super greedy, and if they get the six, they can just kill people. <laughs> We're seeing them start to to allow Crystallize to come over over you know this half of the map. He's level nine. He's got his early stat items done, so can quickly clean up these camps and uh, also stand by the sides of Ilias and uh, let the push on. If he is not careful, look at the remnant position. He needs to get another one. Here we go. It's fine. Yeah, he's far enough away now. Just getting right out of there and away from this push that's been revealed. Kasani with the DD ready to go uh, will help them. Kasani has the right idea. Wall. Can they hold uh, this bomb? Yeah, the thing is, bat is cool then. But if Fennec stalls a bit, yeah, they're gonna go for the kill. Straight up slow into the rolling thunder. There's the stun fall off from Fennec. A glimpse will be there onto the ledge, but they've got the pullback from the remnant. He's stuck in deep underneath the tower. This Naga Siren is slowly dying to the output from this ledge rack. That's one kill. They quickly move on to a second as Maposhka hits the six off the back of that kill. Has the astral step available? They get the two of them. A perfect hold from Hellraisers pushes Navi back from that bottom lane. Yeah, it's time to back top though. Bat cannot die here. Alright. Oh, I... death and the lasso on cooldown there. Yeah. I, I think Fanic and uh, Roger, they're carrying super hard right now. And, uh, I mean, that, that's a very, too. that's or... a very, very nice way of saying that Kasani's not playing very well. That's why. No, he, he's, uh, he's doing fine, but he could okay. do more. I, I think yeah, sure. he's taking yeah. the role of taking more space in the team. Like Fanic and Roger, they're making so many plays. They're doing important plays to like defending this bottom tower. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So, I mean, for the for, for Kasani now, obviously, you've got 60 seconds, no lasso. Like, it, can he still very much fight with the teams that they need the lasso to go, or can he still make aggressive plays without it? No, he only needs flame break, and he's ready to fight, pretty much. At the moment, he's not going to come with the team with the smoke. It's just going to be Roger and Funnick going in, but they're on the high ground, Navi. Smoke will be dispelled. Instant who stomp and the silence onto Maposhka will take the Void Spirit out. They also have the vision for the glimpse back on Roger. He's still got a swashbuckle and a rolling thunder to play with. Up to the high ground he goes, but the Mystic Flare is perfectly placed. Navi will take the two of them. They were prepared for Hellraisers coming in from the river. Yeah, so it, it's not random why the smoke didn't work. There's a reason behind it. You can just look on the map what happened 30 seconds before the smoke. Will Fennec stay here? Okay. So, uh, Bat was farming woods while they were smoking, and uh, the Rick was also farming woods. So, they should be on lanes when they make the smoke. So, I mean, Dyer just read them because of that. Yeah, I guess maybe just feeling a little too confident because they had that ward in the position up. Uh, if you a good move, if you, if you're playing Dora, if your team is smoking, you want to contribute. Maybe not joining them, but you should show yourself on the map. It's a very good contribution. Or even hitting a tower. We'll see. Maposhka is going to head up in at the same time as this TP comes through. Slayer magical, magical. Not going to try for the chain setup. Not too sure of what else is lur lurking behind Maposhka. A Veil on Ember. A backpack. It's a very good Veil game. Oh yeah. Still in back. I mean, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of magical to to work with. Definitely going to to mean that sort of Navi now is this four man without the Naga Siren have have more than enough damage to, to get any of the kills on the map. Yeah. White Spirit will die here. Oh well, the chains didn't get him. Yeah, he did he used to chain. Hmm, okay. He did. He tried for the initial grab rather than waiting for the TP, and that allowed a, a free escape from Maposhka. Safely back to base. Bottom lane, crystallize, trying to go on to Roger. Should I use the ults? Yes. Uh, even cancels the DP with the ulti. Creep died. I mean, crystallize, he's, he's, he's having quite a nice game on this Naga Siren. He's getting a lot of space early on. Yeah. It's time he to is. make moves with Bat, I think. There's, there should not be waiting, Mark. Top lane, 
Nyx is just going to jump into his death. They're set up with the sentries and instant silence. And now Elraisers, they're starting to crumble up here. Funny. Nice touch. He's going to get glimpsed back. The fourth and ready and waiting. He will fall as well. 12 to 6 now for Na'Vi. A 2k lead as all this continues to happen without any requirement from Crystallize to even look at his own half of the map. He can continue to hit the creeps. The Manta style is now done on the Naga Siren uh, at this very great timing of 15 minutes in. It's it's really looking to ramp up uh, for, for Na'Vi in a game where Hellraisers were the one ones that really need to sort of keep a hold of this game from early on with their lineup. Yeah. Um, the, uh, look at mid lane. There might be a player. But if th there's a bat that's falling into a trap right now, uh, I think if you want to play like if you want to play this bat, you should just remove quick buy and not play with quick buy because he's been looking a lot on the timing of the travel and the yules here. So he's been hitting jungle creeps instead of lane creeps and uh, not been ganking. And it's sure. kind of costing them a bit. But I think as soon as he picks up the duels, he's you're going to see him start playing aggressive. It's because he's thinking about his item timings. Playing like a mid player, you know? Pasha doesn't get the stun, but it doesn't matter. Drag back into the static storm. The bat is gone. He got his Sony item. out of the game again. Okay, a, little, a little bit of a silver lining then with the money spent up. Blink into it. Roger. It's going to look to lead him with the Rolling Thunder. Pash is out with the blink. Roger, can he still get a catch here? Who can he find? Looks towards Crystallize, but in fact, he's backing out. Doesn't want to continue to chase the Naga Siren. Jump forward from Aposhka. He's in with the pull on to Ilias. Pops the Resonant Pulse. He's got a fair bit of protection against the right clicks. He's still running. Another jump up as he dukes them back up to the high ground. He'll get himself away, but Crystallize is in. Has the control to set up for the Mystic Flare. Roger will fall. More kills going the way of this Naga Siren. 3 1 and 2. Crystallize's game continues to go from better to even better. Mid lane, Nyx is caught as well the ricky is dead navi striking back hard in this game too now with a 5k lead i, I don't know how hellraiser is going to slow this one down it's very hard right now yeah yeah and you can even imagine this game could be even harder for hellraisers if they lose bottom lane on ricky just think about that for a second that's how i see their draft being a bit hard to play this bat, bat has to do so much for their team so I just want to say, uh, Juggernaut, instead of Ricky, would have been sick this game. <laughs> Juggernaut, yeah. Yeah. I, they, yeah, that, yeah, that wasn't touched in the balance list. That hero, was it? No. But I think Radiant is probably talking about doing a move now. It's time to stop, uh, stop feeding, and it's time to go make the moves themselves now. Huh? Let's see. Now, the problem that's... is, is Kasani now saying, wait, guys, let me farm a BKB? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really blaming bats or anything. No, 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 I'm not, you're not at all. It's, it's, this is actually what we like to hear, just... It's the different options of the ways that you can play the hero in this in this scenario. Yeah. Okay. Funny. We have travels on bats. He's gonna backstab them. Let's just get the lasso. That's a big grab as he got the damage though to kill Magical. Another slight fist is out and the Remnant's prepared there away. And Bat is going to get left behind in the Static Storm. Roger is able to cover him a little bit with the Rolling Thunder. But another slight change and the glimpse back. Kasani will fall. They do manage to at least find both Pasha and Slayer in return. But still, it's not a great trade for Hellraiser's Na'Vi. They're still coming out on top. And this still all continues whilst Crystallize is just... He's loving life right now. His Diffusal Blade is completed on top of the Manta. The Naga Siren continues to, to just hit the creeps and continue to keep this game on track for Na'Vi to take back the win. Yeah, you saw Ember is doing the classic Ember Remnant play. So you... You slide. When you're in danger, you slide. And while you're hitting stuff in slide, you send a remnant from the slide targets. Uh, so you can activate it right away without coming out on the slide. It's a lot of Ember players doing that. You can see Thompson do it every game. That yeah, makes it incredibly hard to, to catch him. I mean, already in, in terms of the catch that they do have, it. they really need to get him held in the smoke screen if they want a chance of killing this Ember down bottom. They try to play Chris. Kasani, he's just dying to the illusions. Crystallize is able to turn them on him with this Manta Diffusal done. Look he wants the song. the song out. He's been yulsed up into the Remnant combo. But he puts the Manta, gets out. Can he pop this song in time? He cannot. They get the kill on the Naga Siren. Finally, That's able to need. end Crystallize's survival down here in their own jungle. See if they can catch anything more. Funix on the hunt. Pasha, who stomped? 
They may wrap back onto this Na'Vi Slayer and the Ilias from the low ground Slayer. Jukes out the remnant, but the pullback's there onto Ilias. They found the silence onto Roger. Clumsy net to set up for Pasha to walk in. There'll be a self fuels from this Pango buying him some time as he is able to walk back out of it. Slayer will die as Roger claims the kill. He's still hunting for Ilias as well. Ilias into the trees on the back of it. Pasha being dealt with by Nix and Funnick. They get themselves a third kill and they should be able to find the disruptor too. Roger He's going to have another swashbuckle and Yules is up in a few seconds if a TP is attempted. He doesn't even have a TP. Ilias, he's got no way out of this. Gets trapped in by his own creep. He's doing a fair bit of damage back to Roger with the Thunder Strike, but with the backup of the Ember. they easily take him out. Watch Ember. His double remnant thing. Is he going to go for I'm it? I am, his I am, Yules, right. uh, he did it from Fog. He, he had a time to heal there. Nice. That's one clean up. So a, a, a very strong hit back there from... Hellraisers. Nick's able to turn up, having that Diffusal Blade done. They've got good damage output from the Ricky, and, and they get that big catch. Just starting it off with all heroes collapsing onto the Naga Siren, getting crystallized out of there. Suddenly a huge amount of that gold lead is just taken out of the game. And spot him. Drag into Lesh. Another grab. Nice. It's Tampedio also, so they know it's cooldown. I want uh, Fanic to start farming now. Like, really get fat. Because he can change this game. You can start carrying this game. Yeah, he's gets got two good, items. Good amount of money saved up. I mean, what sort of itemization are you wanting to see? He's got 2300. Where's he putting it? Uh, Bloodstone, BKB, Shivas, and you can carry this game. He's gonna need BKB though at some point. But I would even go Bloodstone now just to be greedy. Top lane. I've got him. More kills for Crystallize, that they are heading straight over there. Kasani leading the charge. Song is going to be popped. Na'Vi uh, no wants Ember, to try and then. fight this. Remnant's going to be thrown in from the side. Kasani with a quick yules at the initiation from Na'Vi. Not necessarily perfect as, as Hellraisers. They're still fighting fit. Kill they can take this fight. Ilias is going to be chased. Disruptor's gone. They're looking for Pasha in the trees. He's trying to hide. Crystallize, he's got to keep his distance away from this bat. But Nyx is already on top Just of them. Center. Wrapping around with the vision. They're getting outnumbered. The Napalm stacks up on a Pasha. Pasha is dead. The jump over the Desilinate towards Crystallize. A remnant also in place to make sure he cannot head north to escape. They surround this Naga Siren. Take down Crystallize. Magical is committing to try and find kills, but Nyx with the jump out, he will live. Magical is going to get pulled back by this remnant after the slide of fist ends. Kasani is just layering down the damage with this napalm wow. and firefly. They clean him up as well. Hellraisers, they're absolutely back into this as they started to fall behind. But this is twice in a row now where they're taking these fights. They're killing both Crystallize and Magical. They're just fighting far too broken up, Na'Vi, and Hellraisers, they're punishing it. So, I wanted to mention this at like 15 minutes in this game. Ember has been fighting, uh, they've been fighting without Ember throughout this game, and they've been winning fights without Ember. But just now, they started losing fights, and it's costing them. They need to bring their strongest hero to fight Ember. He needs to be first to the fight. Stop, stop. It's gonna uh, dodge the ults. No, dodge the ult. Oh, is that net? Yeah, he's got the clumsy. Wow. And they still yeah, may be able to get this kill on Slayer. A lot of TPs coming in though. Pasha jumps in with the stomp. Nyx is committing on the back lines. Force on Slayer takes him away, but they still stay on top of him. He's outside of the static storm. Nyx, Roger does get trapped behind. A glimpse back is attempted, but he's able to use the tricks of the trade to dodge it. He's going for the TP out. They cannot find him in time. Nyx will escape. Yeah, they're making so many plays. Okay. Yeah, uh, they need to bring Ember to the fights pretty much. Let's see what Fanny can do. Can he finish this item? Kind of important. Oh, and, and it is very interesting to see, you know, we, we see sort of like the way that Hellraisers have decided to play this, you know. The bat, as you said, there, there was definitely options for Kasani to play the opening different, but the fact that he does go for the, the safe play, the very passive opening, is starting to pay off now because he hit that good timing with the, the bots and the yules. He is now turning up to the fights. He's 2,500 into the BKB, and he, he's, he's having a very good impact now at this stage that still, you know, it's 24 minutes in, but Na'Vi, they're not quite yet prepared to deal with this very well-leveled bat. Yeah. I mean, the Yules is saving him uh, against these supports. They're both silence-based supports. So Yules is, was actually very important for him to have. Uh, I want to see his axe come here from the Disruptor. Can't, he's really fat, actually. This Disruptor. Okay, right, gold. About, about halfway into it already, Elias. Yeah. Once they play against the Storm, though. 
They don't they don't have any play except uh, Pango rolling, stunning the illusions while they hit. It's gonna save them. And Lesh ulting at the same time. Yeah, other than that, no way to get any allies out of the storm at yeah. all. No blink here to initiate, so... Just gonna try and run him down. If they can find him, they're popping the stampede. Navi might try and take the fight. Crystallize pops the song. They are relatively close. It's easy. It's close enough for the setup. Static Storm and Kinetic Field catches two of them. Self fuels buys time, but not enough for Roger. Roger still goes down. Kasani finds the option to lasso the Ember. Magical will die. He's dead for seven. He does have buyback if he feels the need wow. to come back. And Pasha goes forward with the blink of the four man hoof stop. That is good enough for Magical to buy back. Navi, they're going to try and turn this fight, but Crystallize, he's falling fast and he's out of it. They kill off the Naga Siren. Magical's got to find some kills in return, but Nyx jumps over towards Kasani. They don't have the visual control to catch out the Rifty. He'll escape. Self Yours buys a little bit more time for Kasani. In fact, it's enough. Kasani's going to live. Magical's not able to kill him off. He gets knocked back. The flame break into back. the the remnant. Magical dead for a hundred seconds because of that dieback. Ilias is trying to TP out, but the Yules again it cancels it all. The disruptor is dead, and Navi they've just lost the entirety of the lead that they were starting to build up in the last ten minutes. Hellraisers they are striking back full force, and this game it really feels like the momentum it's shifted right back into their hands. Yeah, who said who said Ricky was bad? Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, that was me. As for, I mean, as for you, a commitment. You just tell me all game how brilliant the. No, was, Ricky, this hero is. He's not backstabbing. Rush. Oh Hello? god. Efficiency. Uh, Pango needs to move closer. It's always the closer one. Pango move close. You need to be inside the rush. Yeah, yeah, there we go. But uh, they need to switch targets. The void spirit needs to tank. Maybe. Like oh, no, this. This is the great thing about it. We're seeing already how much trouble they're having catching him every single time he's just blinking in and out of the fights. He's not even hit 20. When he hits 20 and he has that cast range on it, it it's a whole other nightmare for, for Na'Vi in terms of trying to kill Nyx. You don't hold him in place for the full duration. One blink and he's already too far away for you to catch him out. You've got to hope to have a glimpse, but most of the time you're using the glimpse to set up. So this Ricky feels pretty invincible in most of these situations, and particularly now with the Aegis done. Jump forward onto Ilias. He's actually popping down the Static Storm to save himself. I mean, to, to be fair, it will do. Actually, no, he, he wow. burns out. Man. He's dead. 45 seconds, and he has got buyback, but even if he does, it's over a minute without Static Storm. So very hard for them to make plays into Hellraiser's Aegis push. Oh, that's a good catch. Best one. See? They get funny, but it's going to cost them. Pash is gone. No, I'm telling you, it's a great hero. Yeah. yeah, it is. Good old Ricky. So, uh, the Ricky is actually countering Ember very hard, if you look at it, this game. I mean, what's Ember got itemized? Just the Yules and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he has to go Yules and BKB, and that, that kind of sucks, right? You know, you never really want to do that, but he needs it. He, yeah, he doesn't need the Yules. He needs something against Smokescreen. That was the problem. Okay. Ricky hits the Naga, 30 armor Naga, and just dies instantly. It's crazy. Radiant are scanning. What's his, is that the full BKB out for Ricky thanks to these kills? It is. Nyx has got it done. So. Cast range. You see what I mean? Just, you're just jumping Box. from a mile away. You cannot escape this man. <laughs> yeah. Playing around with him a little bit there, waiting for the last hit. Making sure that it hits extra hard onto Magical. 15, 3, and 6. Nyx's game continuing to look. Beautiful, as I say, with this BKB and Manta. I, I, don't, I don't see this Ricky dying unless he makes some massive error right now. This is a very hard kill for Na'Vi to get. I guess potentially, I say I don't see him dying. They do have that broken combo, right? There is going to be the sleep yes. into the Agonim's Disruptor. You know, granted, Ilias can get it. He's still holding around that 2400. Those last few fights have held him at this net worth. He's, he's got to try and find some way of getting it done. But if he gets it done, you, you can never write that combo off right as well. It's, it's, it's one of the strongest in the game. Yeah. And uh, I'm a bit worried about their push. If they get to kill this Lesh fast with the Santar stun, then they don't have any push, really, to end the game. So let's see what they can do with this. I think second Roars is what they need to end this game. Pasha? But they can find this. He's juking. He's good. They, yeah, they don't have a scan, so they can't look to try and find him out. Pasha will be fine as he sneaks his way back up the lane. 
And you've got the blink done on Kasani, so additional ways to, to start the fights without the the warrior being glimpsed back if he just enters in. He can look to try and find the disruptor. You know, I, I've been watching other games, and sometimes, like, uh, when I've seen Disruptor now before, this Disruptor is like, oh, we're losing. I'm just gonna buy Glimmer Cape. I hate, I hate that. <laughs> you gotta go all in, haven't you? Yeah. You gotta go all in. That's the only way you turn it. It just gone. See so if they can do it a second time. Pass it. He's just trying to save himself. Yeah. There's no way they can fight next to twice. They just take it the once. So the player is to hit base top until uh, Naga gets back to base. Let's see if they do it. It's a bit risky, but they they should do it. Don't want to give Naga too many items. Yeah, what do we have? Well, Crystallize. So, so he went for the Eye of Skadi this game. Um, how, how? I mean, could you sort of describe like? How are you determining uh, as an Argosiren whether you're going for like the the Scardi in this situation rather than the the Heart, for example? Yeah, most people go Heart against Lesh, but yeah. Scardi Scardi slow uh, on Rangers is a big deal. I I prefer the Heart, but uh, this this one gives you like way more stats if you look at it. Yeah, so across strength. the board, yeah. Twenty five Agi. And I guess sort of in Crystallize's mind as well, he's he's playing for for that item after the Scardi, which is is going to be the BKB that he queues up to make sure that he can have some some force in the fights without worrying too much about, for for instance, the smoke screen and such, holding him down and in place. Down bottom though, the jump's been made onto base, both bottom. Slayer and Pasha. They're gone. They're into the base. See what sort of a trade Navi can do down bottom with this illusion. Remnant seat. out fast. They've got the jump. They've got the oh. catch. Instantly, the Yules into the Ether Remnant. Hard for Very him to make quick. a play to put a break to it as they get that kill on Magical once more. Magical, uh, it continues they need to be to go dead. For the kill bottom. There's no buyback on him. He's gonna buy travels otherwise. Oh, Funic. Yeah. He just fat fingered the BKB. Unless... They need to kill him. They need to try to kill him now. BKB off. Disruptor. It's their only play right now. Which is just make sure he does not get over. Yeah, they should really commit on this slash right now. They have song. Uh, the otherwise, their base is gone. They need to trade. I think they're panicking. Ah, uh, they're they're going passive. They're letting this mid racks fall. They're not getting anything done elsewhere. Hellraiser is just able to clean up mid. Look towards top. Pash is going to be back in the game, but still half a minute without their carry ember. Oh yeah, you can't travel. Remember, look at this. <laughs> it's not the old travels. Yeah, I was I was wondering <laughs> if you were slightly because I was like, oh maybe yeah. it, maybe when you buy the bots, yeah, it refreshes the TP and S4 knows something that I don't. But no, yeah, I get I get yeah, it doesn't so. Yeah, he's still stuck yeah. down. He also forgot Sonic. You saw him stopping in base. Clicking the travels. Well, looks like we've got another toilet break. Uh, we yes. will allow, of course, because this is a beautiful charity tournament. And it's, uh, it's a reminder to you all to make sure you get those donations in. As uh, we do, we are really grateful for the players to, to take the time and, and take a part of what's been a... Uh, a tournament for such a, an excellent cause in, in such a hard time right now for many of, of you all around the world. So, big shout out to We Play, and of course, a shout out to all the charities that are doing the best to help. And, and a reminder to go to donate.weplay.tv so you can just uh, show your show your support and appreciation for for what I think we can all agree has been a an excellent week for watching Dota 2 from the safety of of your own homes. And I hope you're all feeling cozy and, and enjoying the coverage with myself and S4 because. We're certainly having a very good time indeed watching the teams that we've had the treats to see brawl it out. And in this game, I mean, 14k up. As we say, you know, three, 300 gold, S4, and the, and the Disruptor Agonims will be done. It's it, 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 Now, who who do they need to catch to, to secure a team fight? You know, you're, you're making the call, you're looking for the opportunities to lead in with the song. Who are you watching to make sure it's close together? Who are the two, three heroes you've got to get to get an easy team fight win? It's first is Ricky, second yeah. is Lesh, third one is Pango. <laughs> Pango is actually very important for the, he can roll. You see, he bought dagger, which is very smart. He's gonna stay back from song range, so he can start the roll up uh, without having the song on him, and then he's gonna blink on the Naga illusions, killing them all. But Naga is buying BKB, which mm -hmm. is very important. Uh, he will not die with BKB this game. Yeah, and I, I see because because of that as well, he he doesn't need to to go for like any other further stat item. It, it's just the aggression, queuing up the the abyssal blade after, 
so they have that additional way to jump in and, and suddenly you're using this song static storm on even just one target then in that situation because you know that crystallize is going to have that solid way to initiate yeah. onto a second core so this is where lesh needs to be fat he needs a bloodstone now and the shivas uh, so they can actually battle them even through the disrupt rules Spago is going to do his job and stop some of the damage, but they're still going to have a lot of damage, even though the roll hits the illusions. The Ember is still there. Anyway, I wanted to go back to your question about the Naga item. The Skadi is... I gave, gave it some thought. I think Skadi is more like... Um, you want to be tanky, but you need damage also. <laughs> so hard yes, doesn't yeah, really it, yeah, it really is sort of that... that yeah, that Middle yeah, ground. Jack, jack of all trades item. Yeah. Butterfly is all damage. Skadi yeah. is middle ground. Heart is, you know, full tank. Yeah, I feel like yeah, butterfly is never gonna feel good as, as an Argus Iron against these heroes like Lestrat that, that just rip through your HP. Yeah, you've got to go. Yeah, as you say, Scardy or Heart, and yeah, Scardy definitely given a bit of all those those required necessities that they need Crystallize to come up with in this game. That Navi are starting to to really fall significantly behind in 16k down at the moment against Hellraisers. Hellraisers are doing a good job playing passive. This is the time they had to play passive. Because Disruptor Aghanims is up. Yeah, they've got to be really, eight. really scared of this combo. Yeah, and <laughs> they know it, Navi. They cannot take a fight after Aegis. It's time. Time to go. Look at the lane, top lane. Giving a lot of information. This is a good time for Navi to fight if they can find them. Them groups up. Panic! 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 Buyback! No buyback! Uh, is they found Rick? Ooh, they have. Look at Pango. It is that combo. Ricky is in. Is there any way of saving him? There is. Ricky just gets shredded. Will buy back. That is the the counter to the combo. He'll come instantly in with the buyback. Navi. They will try and get out, but the lasso's there in. And they have the ability to cancel Force the stuff. BKB TP out Force from Crystallize. He's locked in place. They've got one force to offer. It's not enough to save him. Crystallize is dead. They'll turn over towards Pasha. And with no Crystallize for 70 seconds, no Pasha for 70 seconds as well, Hellraisers, they could just continue to run down Na'Vi one by one. Kasani, he's not even going to fall. He's able to step ah. out of the Mystic Flare. It's four dead on Na'Vi. Hellraisers can just go barreling down the lane. This game may just be even over. Yeah, Miposhka and Void Spirit. He yielded the Centaur, who had forced up there. He would have saved Naga. And he kind of sealed this game for him. Very Break nice. Back to. I mean, it's, yeah, the, the, it's the sort of the counter to those broken combos. You know, one of the reasons why carries like Void have fallen off. Anyone with these, these sort of these big one trick sort of spells. Buyback's always going to be incredibly powerful against them. They're back in on the action. It's, they just lose the Ricky. Sure, it's their big. Hero, but Nyx can buy back knowing that there's no threat with that combo down. A second set of racks will be taken. There's still a tier two down bottom, so they cannot go for the megas, but they can certainly do an extra bit of damage down mid if they wish to. Navi, they're going to be back up in 20 to 30 seconds, and they do have the combo up once more. So, I mean, if they do that combo again now on Nyx within like the next six minutes, then it's then they've got the potential to hit back at Hellraisers. Yeah. Okay. So, next fight, if I'm on Navi's side. And I say we go on the Ricky all out with Song. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be happy about it still, even though he has no buyback. Okay. What I would be saying is, I need the center to start the fight first, or Ember Chain, so we can save the Song uh, for a better positioning. Um, I think they should really talk about it now, because they can. They can win this game still. And because you look at the buybacks at the moment, Hellraisers they've only got the buyback on the Void Spirit. Everybody else is short on the gold. So whoever, if Na'Vi can get a fight right now, they're going to have a, a huge window for Crystallize Fanic. to just run down mid. Look at Fanic, he, he's looking for creeps, but he knows uh, they're posturing. Fanic wants to run in first, but he needs the buyback. There's the initiation. This could be really painful for Fanic. Can they get him out of in time? He's able to use up yes, already. Kasani's just running straight in. The song will be popped. Who are they going to grab? Nice, they're last dragging one. onto the Disruptor to make sure there isn't the Static Storm set up. The perfect follow-up play from Kasani to break that combo of Na'Vi. Crystallized BKB is on the retreat. They have the Ether Remnant pulling back in Pasha. Pasha still with HP to play with. Charging forward, looking for Miposhka, but they've lost two on Navi. They got the big kill though. Ricky is dead. Crystallized buys back. They have to try and abuse this two minutes when Nyx is out of the game. Swashbuckle onto Slayer. Crystallized has now rejoined the forces. Hellraisers, they've got to be careful. Sure, there's no Disruptor, there's no Sentor, but there's, there's still no the damage. catch. It's magical. Radiant. No damage on Radiant right now. So, they got to run. Be confident. 
Now for Dyer, what are you doing? Roshan is up. Are you are you trying to take Rosh? Are you just trying to take some more towers? What can you do with this 100 seconds where Ricky's gone? Yeah, Rosh. Rosh is everything. They really need the Rosh. They should start, start it soon. Or not start it, they should kill them. Constantly now. And if you're Hellraisers, with the four heroes alive, are you looking to push Navi away from the Rosh? Or do you say, we cannot take this fight, we've got to do it from the high ground when Ricky's back up? And uh, no, you got a posture there, I think. Lesh has by, so they have to stay postured here. They need to mess with them. Or, or they can go for the base at the same time and still posture with pangos. Like Roger, you can still edge, you know. <laughs> we saw that move. We saw oh, that yeah. before. We definitely did. Yeah, Navi's job oh. is to go on them right away. Uh, who, who, they're, found, they're gonna go on the Lesh. It's not that good. Lesh is dead. Jam will hit the deck, but as you say, Lesh is prepared for the buyback. Funnick straight into the game. Once more, Meposhka's got the Dissimilate to jump out. He's able to get away, but they have the vision for the drag back with the glimpse. Another Astral step still now. saved, so Meposhka will live. Hellraiser's doing a good job of fighting Na'Vi outside of the pit. Kasani, he's in. The lockdown on Magical. Lasso buys him some time, but Magical still with a BKB can commit onto Meposhka. Meposhka, Resonant Pulse, and an Astral step out. He will live. He turns with the Remnant. Magical is just getting toyed around with, but there's the backup he requires. Pasha's in with a two man hoot stop. The follow Mystic Flare. Funny, it has to put the BKB in an attempt to get out of there. Kasani flies over the ravine. Funnick's being chased down Funnick. by the illusions of Crystallize. Funnick is dead. A dieback effectively for the Leshrac. Pango silenced up. He's trying to chase on a Crystallize. Save Crystallize the is the focus. They've got to keep this Nagasaren alive, but he's been bashed. He's held in the smoke screen. Crystallize, he goes down. They get the big kill. Hellraiser is hitting back hard despite losing the Leshrac. They look towards Slayer. The bash, the root, he's dead and gone. Hellraisers will win the fight around this area. Nami cannot go for Roche as now they themselves, they're buying back. They've got to try and keep their supports alive, but they Cannot get to Slayer in time. 50 seconds, no disruptor. How is go base. Don't go rush. Just go base. 85 seconds, no crystallize to set anything up. There'll be a buyback from Ilias. What's the he call? Has got Static Storm. How I mean, how hard can they go in here? We'll see. Let's see if they can take these. Tables. They're saying, wait for Bat. Wait for Bat. I'm gonna stop the disruptor. He says the Bat. Okay, they're calling for Rush. They're too scared of Disruptor. Because they um, could also lose the game there, you know? Yeah, this is definitely the safer play. Yeah. As you say, maybe there was the opportunity to shut things down, but there, there was that, you know... It was definitely a high-risk, high-reward situation. They'll, they'll make the smarter call, just go for Rush. Yeah. I want the... I want the... All the Nagas up. I want the bat to lasso uh, now in the next 20 seconds. Right before Naga spawns, because they, they can never kill her. If he sets up close to mid lane, like he does, eh? he can last her into Ricky. It's go. taking a long time to rush. They've got it then. Aegis and Cheese into the hands of Nyx. This game getting infinitely scarier and scarier for Navi. They're down 32k gold and they've got to try and hold against this Aegis cheese push that's going to be coming in from Hellraisers. Those timers are also passing one minute and a half and Nyx will have buyback available as well to, to play with. Something that Na'Vi's cause, especially Crystallize, isn't going to have the luxury of for four more minutes. So a very, very, very so sketchy period now for Na'Vi. They have to be careful. One more hit from Hellraisers could end them this game. See Navi, their plan, they're just trying to keep at least one of these waves shoved out away from the base. It's going to be responded to by Hellraisers, Kasani. Start to come across. Navi, they are out of here, back towards their, the safety of their fountain. Basher is done on Crystallize. All ults at the ready. Navi can look for the combo, but... We already saw, so the counter of having a second life makes it hard. Mid lane, Nyx, he jumps in on a Magical. Magical has to put the BKB. Nyx does use his as well to try and commit for it. So BKB is out from the two cores. They are bringing that bottom wave slowly round. Nip Kasani just pulling the creeps to make sure that the Radiant wave gets towards that tier two. And Hellraisers, they, they just want to try and look for the Megas rather than trying to run down mid. Yeah. Uh, Panic should buy the placement here. It's all this Bracer. It's very important. Look at his item, unless the neutral one. <laughs> this could be a game changing. That's a tanky boy. It's perfect. 3800 30, feet. Yeah, I'll be a huge fan of that. Play Mel as you say. Yeah. 
going from 19 to, to 29 armor, that's a that's a decent jump up in, in physical resistance. Yeah. He needs a lot of mana also. Shivas is gonna be good. The what is it called? Witless Chakra? Witless Chakra, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one is costs you four in mana. Bloodstone makes up for it. Yeah, and he's got the cheese as well. So two rounds the mana pool to play with. Lasso. Coming. See Kasani. Can he find Trees the ground? Getting removed. Wants down. He's looking for it. He's gonna go on Pasha. Finds the centaur straight away, drag back, and that. Is it gonna be that? Pasha, he gets forced with the BKB on. He's able to get out of the combo. Crystallize, he's popping the song, but there isn't the time for them to set up with the way that Roger is just rolling across the back lines, making sure that Navi couldn't get any sort of combo off with that song attempted. Yeah, they don't need song for the combo. Uh, they need any stun or chains. And we'll see what happens. See what they want to blow on the bat here. Jump forward, who's stopping the Mystic Flare? That's done it. Kasani's gone. Instant buyback from the Bat Rider as he looks to return to the side of his teammates. Maposhka committing in deep. Nyx, he's just going for the back lines. He finds the Scar. The Static Storm is down. Nyx, he's in deep. He's rooted in place. They've got him the once. Can they do it again? The Aegis is popped. Rolling over here. Roger just committing chaos onto the back lines of Navi, hitting all three of them <laughs> with that ultimate. He goes straight across over the Watch Magical as well. Lasso and trapped up in the smoke screen. It is game over. It is GG. As Hellraisers, they will take game two. Navi just couldn't hit off that combo. They couldn't hold it off long enough. Hellraisers, it's, I mean, this team, we saw it against VP and we're seeing it here against Navi. 